Saturday, but that's what your squad's for. Chances as were afforded to players on Monday night, the majority took them, and Craig Elliott will be looking for them to do the same again today. Joe Leesley scored from a corner on uh, on Monday night, which caught the, the, he the headlines, but his overall performance, I thought, was pretty impressive, and we're going to see him in a more natural position today. Yeah, I think we started to see what he's all about. He's had a, a frustrating time so far. He's not managed to get himself in the side for one reason or another, but he's in there now. He's got four games to go in his initial loan spell, and I imagine he'll be doing everything he can to impress. And then we'll see where it goes in early January when there's a the renewal up for talks. The Boston United players just making their way out of the uh, dressing room area, not down the, the tunnel area with the, the COVID restrictions, things having to be split up. And it is freezing cold today, Craig. I can't believe how cold it is. I've just not got warm ever since <laughs> I've sat down here at quarter past one. It's not the warmest. I think it got cold second half last week, but um, I suppose it's the time of year we're in. We've not had any bad weather as such yet, so a week before Christmas we'll take that. We can't afford too much bad weather in this season of all seasons, so let's hope it's uh, quite kind on us over the next few weeks. Yeah, fingers crossed, Fylde have uh, made their way out as well in their all-white kit. Boston in the traditional black and amber home kit. The referee this afternoon is Matthew Scholes, assisted by Tom Cook and Ruben Ricardo. Uh, the fourth official today is Ashley Allen. So... Uh, one area where Boston might feel they might get some some joy, Craig, is is the goalkeeper for Fylde, who's been brought in late on loan from from Burnley because they've had a, a few keeper issues injury wise. Yeah, Chris Neal got injured on training uh, on Monday before the Curzon Ashton game, and by that time with the 12 o'clock registration deadline, it was too late for them to bring anyone else in. So they fielded their youth team goalkeeper, who by all accounts did pretty well at Curzon Ashton, but. Lewis Thomas coming in today for his debut from Burnley. Always interesting to see how a young goalkeeper gets on. Uh, it's either going to go one way or another, he's going to have a nightmare or he's going to have an absolute blinder, you would imagine. So I know they think highly of him at Burnley from, from what's been said. So we will see how he performs. We certainly will. The uh, two sides swapping ends, so it's going to be Boston United that will be playing from right to left as we're looking at it and if you're watching on the club video stream as well the uh, you'll see the, uh, the change of ends just occurring right now the file players currently in a huddle ready for kickoff FA trophy then can Boston United make it through to round four of the competition or is it going to be all about the league between now and the end of May. We'll find out over the next 90 minutes. If it is level after 90, it does go straight to penalties. We had plenty of penalties in the opening game here at the Jaitman's Community Stadium. Will we see any more this afternoon? So it'll be filed getting us underway with Jordan Lussie, the number 16, who will get the game started. Referee just making sure the two goalkeepers are all good to go. Making sure the file players and the Boston players are all ready. The fourth official gives him the big thumbs up. Referee just blow on his whistle and we are underway and it is filed who put the ball high up into the air. One for Duxbury to challenge with Junior Mondal and it will be an early throw for file. Looking for Kurt Willoughby behind Pierce Bird. It comes out to the edge of the penalty area for the home team. Lovely little turn. Mondal now into the penalty area and scores. And within 22 seconds, Junior Mondal has given Fylde the lead. It's 1-0 to the away team. That's not a good start. Jack Sampson doing well there, holding off Luke Shields, teeing up Junior Mondal, and he bent it round Ross Fitzsimons' dive. Fired a goal up in 22 seconds. Well, that was a very quick goal for Fylde. I say, I think... I don't think, apart from the 50-50 challenge with Duxbury for the head, Boston have not had a touch yet. That is how quick Fylde have gone down and scored. It, it went out for a throw. Uh, Duxbury got a, a half a touch on the header, but that was more of a 50-50 challenge. And then after that, it was Fylde straight through to make it 1-0 and work to do for Boston. And Mondalo scored in the midweek trophy victory as well. They've given Fylde the lead and they've got another free kick here, Craig. Yeah, Mondal not played very much in the league, but got his chance on Monday night at Curzon Ashton and took it pretty well, scoring the two goals, two of the four, which 
Cook Fylde's place in today's tie and he's started off today's contest in blistering form once again. Lussie with this free kick then into the penalty area is cleared away by Fylde, oh by Boston. Fylde will have a throw. Alex Whitmore just allowing the ball to roll out and we are going to see the Fylde man coming forward. Looks like it's Luke Connell who's going to take this throw. Left back from around the edge of the penalty area. Boston and his cover from that recover from that early shot then finding themselves 1-0 down in 22 seconds. Fylde still in possession at the moment. Chip ball into the penalty area. Shields just clears it up into the air. The wind catches it though and you know, Paul Green wanted a foul for a shove in the back. It's not given. It's filed with the ball back into the penalty area. It was Ogle trying to get it. Now Boston maybe can get some possession and get their foot on the ball because they've just not been able to string a pass together as of yet. Leesley's going back to goal. Doesn't keep it in. And this has been a poor start from Boston United but also a strong start from Fylde. Yeah, I would imagine the message to Fylde was start strongly. Let's try and make an impression away from home and their manager will be delighted with the start they've made. Like you say, though, the Pilgrims have not started at all. We're a good three or four minutes in now and I don't think the Pilgrims have really been out of their own half. No, not been a good start then for Boston. If you are just joining us already, Boston trailing by a goal to nil. Junior Mondal, low left-footed shot into the bottom corner giving the away side the lead. So, goal kick for Ross Fitzsimmons to take with three minutes into this game here on Hope and Glory on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Goro can't win it. Comes off a Boston man. Bit of indecision there between the referee and the linesman. It'll give Ogle a chance to take the throw. There was actually a bit of indecision. I watched the throwing that was given that led to the goal. I think, think, I think it was a far throwing, but they both looked at each other on that occasion as if to not sure which way it was going to go. So I think they've got to decide which one of the two is going to make these decisions. Long throw forward, cleared by Bird. Will be a Boston throw this time on the halfway line. Leesley trying to throw it, but instead leaves it for Duxbury to take. Goes long over the head of Burrow, cleared away by Fylde. Bit of a miscontrol though, and then cleared further forward by Whitmore. Green tries to steal it in the midfield off Willoughby. And here come Fylde, once again it's the through ball, Tuta really needs to sprint to get on the end of this, just helps it back to Fitzsimmons who's miscues the clearance, it's going to bounce up just in front of where we are, it was Ben Tollett running in on goal and again issue for Boston United at the back. Yeah it didn't look pretty did it, they were uh, treading, treading forward to getting back but uh, Tootle did enough to lay the ball back to Fitzsimmons but he couldn't deal with it and uh, Fylde have got another chance to throw it in. Fitzsimmons is going to come out to the right hand corner of his penalty area to gather that one. So, four and a half minutes in, it is filed to lead by a goal to nil here. That junior Mondal goal, the difference. Long kick from Fitzsimmons, and that's going to bounce up, and it's just going to go wide of the post. And well, I think we can see the strength of the win there, Craig, and the fact that that nearly didn't even bounce before it went out of play. Yeah, it is windy out there. You can see the flag behind the goal fluttering away. Luke Thomas was Lewis Thomas was happy that he was wide of his goal. It was never going to challenge him, but that kick all the way through from one keeper to the other. So goal kick for Thomas. First touch for him as a filed player on loan from Burnley. Goes towards the halfway line. Duxbury wins the header, bouncing around in the centre of midfield at the moment. Bit of head tennis between the two teams. Now Leesley will try and flick it forward. Can't do so. One for Bird to have to chase back. Now Leesley does try and head it forward. Burrow can't win the ball. It's with Kurt Willoughby for file. Played forward. Fitzsimmons again having to come out to the edge of his penalty area and gather. But Fylde certainly looking to get that ball through in behind Boston's back line early on, Craig. Yeah, it's virtually two years since the Pilgrims conceded a first minute goal. And I hope it doesn't have a familiar ring to it, but that was in a 3 0 FA Trophy defeat at Wrexham. So found themselves 2-0 down in about 10 minutes that day so we've got to make sure that doesn't happen today still plenty of time to go and turn this around but not a good start it certainly isn't so throw for Duxbury on the halfway line six minutes in Boston Mill filed one thrown forward Burrow lovely control with his chest takes it down plays into Paul Green edge of the penalty area Green striding forward out wide now for Boston to 
Hawkridge looks to get the ball into the edge of the penalty area. Platt, can he line up the shot? Instead comes back to Green. Green cuts back inside on his left foot. Boston still with players over, including Hawkridge. Now out wide to Leesley. Oh, and Leesley's taken down. Foul from Ogle, free kick for Boston, but first time really, Craig, we've seen Boston get on the ball and they showed some neat stuff there. Yeah, they had a minute or so of a decent possession really in and around the box. Couldn't get the shot away, Platt didn't fancy it, Green couldn't get it set particularly well. And then when Leesley did look to get into a really promising area, Ogle brought him down and Leesley will now deliver this set piece. So it is going to be a free kick into the box for Boston from their attacking left position. It's going to be Leesley who will take it. Scored in Monday's victory over Evesham in the previous round. What can he create here for Boston? Leesley, left footed ball in towards the far post. Shields was close. It comes back out to the edge of the penalty area. Preston can't control it. Platt then comes and steals the ball back for Boston. Out wide to the right to Green. He goes back to Hawkridge. Coming in field now, Boston. Platt tries to stab it through to Burrow. Cleared away by. Filed once again, and the offside flag does go up against Paul Green. It's Boston Mill filed one here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Yeah, finally a couple of minutes there from the Pilgrims with a bit of bit of intent, bit of purpose, bit of possession in and around the box. Not tested debutant Lewis Thomas yet, but promising signs. And Craig Hill will be looking to build on that in the next few minutes. Certainly well. Notts County scoring. In the FA Trophy, leading at Morpeth by a goal to nil. So Baseford leading at Peterborough Sports by a goal to nil. Goal kick play forward. Look in the air for Files left back Conlon to clear long. Looking for the run of Kurt Willoughby. Willing runner early on in this game. Shields clearance comes off Willoughby's shin and behind for a goal kick. Certainly a lot of experience at this level throughout the side, isn't there? The file, do you the mean? Filed, yeah, yeah. The uh, Chris Neal's not playing today, the goalkeeper, but here Nathan Pond came in from Salford, having got promoted to the Football League with them, I believe. And uh, yeah, you just look, it's it's packed full of quality. Jack Sampson's played at this level for many years with Southport. They paid money for him a few weeks ago. So wherever you look, there are established players at, at this level and above. But then again, you could say the same for for the Pilgrims as well. It's uh, I think if you finish above five this season, you may well win this league. So they'll, uh, they're the benchmark. Duxbury has possession, plays it long down the left wing, headed away by Pond, out for a Boston United throw. Duxbury again has to go into the stand to try and get it. Getting a bit of stick off some of the five substitutes, I think, because he made his way. Duxbury plays it to Burrow, who flicks the header on, but too much on it, and we have for a goal kick. Yeah, I think Duxbury had, was still contracted at Fylde for this season, but for whatever reason, opted to move on. I think it was a mutual parting in the end. Always one of Craig Elliott's key transfer targets this summer. He landed him fairly early. I don't know who's delighted to get him, but uh, like you say, not talking about experienced quality players on the Fylde side, he's obviously won promotion from this level with Stockport. Didn't quite work out for him at Fylde, but these things happen, and there he is here at Boston. Busy day for early goals in our two featured games this afternoon. Boston going 1-0 down in the opening minute. Second minute goal for Lincoln City to give them the lead against Northampton. Here come Boston United forward. It was Hawkridge in a more attacking position there, trying to get it through to Jordan Burrow. But since that goal, we reached the 10 and a half minute mark. Boston certainly are, are getting things together and have, have pen filed in a bit more. Yeah, you just like to think that this game might work in reverse to the one we saw at Mill Farm about a month ago when the Pilgrims played really well first half um, but only led 1-0 and then Ball came back strongly after half time and, and deservedly got the win so these things have a tendency to even themselves out and there'll be no better time to do that than this afternoon. Ball thrown back by Leesley into Duxbury's path he's now running forward into the edge of the penalty area right footed shot low easy gather for the goalkeeper Lewis Thomas but a bit of space just opening up there for Duxbury and if there's one thing for Boston United that has been lacking at times this season it has been goals but did well there the, uh, the left back he did yeah he cut inside on his right foot he never really fancied him at that point but um, yeah good intent got forward he'll be looking for that next opportunity on his left foot and he'll fancy himself to at least test the goalkeeper a little bit more than he did on that occasion and create that bit of history as well as being Boston United's first goal scorer at the 
Yankee Stadium. Yeah, we need to get that ticked off sooner rather than later. Hopefully we won't still be talking about that this time next week because what are we two and a bit games in now. Been a few chances, but a bit of inspired goalkeeping last week from Chester. Here comes Boston again with Green, just misplaces the pass. This time though, Tootle stops the ball getting any further cleared. It will be a filed throw. Be taken by Conlon. Intelligent play from Burrow just to knock it down into Boston's path there and not flick it on and let it run through to the goalkeeper. So Conlon to take this throw for the away side, leading by a goal to nil. Flicked on by Sampson and it's now filed into the penalty area. Shot comes in, it's well blocked though by Pierce Berg. Good bit of defending there from the low knee from Eastley for a second. It looked like it was going to be beaten and it would have been an easy opportunity for uh, Kurt Willoughby to give Fowler a 2-0 lead but well defended from Bird. Yeah, I think he slipped initially and I thought he was going to foul him but uh, he recovered really well. Had to time that to perfection to just prevent a penalty and potentially even worse for himself. So did that pretty well. And, and what the programs must do this half, which they didn't manage against Chorley, is if they can't strike back straight away is make sure they don't go 2-0 down because that's ultimately what finished the game against Chorley um, by half time really and they can't afford for that to happen today. Burrow picks it up on the halfway line for Boston then gets dispossessed now it's another chance for Fylde to break forward and they are doing that with Phyllis Skirk he looks to set Ogilvy right back in Ogle gets it goes towards the touch line gets the cross into the box oh it's a complete miscue from Willoughby that would have been a great chance for him to make it 2-0 but he Lost where a ball was. Here come Fylde though once again with Sampson. Bit of skill from Sampson. Sets off Ogle once again on the right. Ogle with the long ball towards the far post. Still not cleared by Boston United. Now Green for the Pilgrims can take it down and try and pick a pass. He goes long down the attacking right. One for Burrow to try and chase but he's easily seen out by Whitmore and it will be a foul throw. Yeah, ball landed nicely again for Willoughby but fairly central as well. Missed his kick. Chance was gone, but hard oh, look like they've got some quality. We, well, we know they have, but they, um, they're a dangerous outfit. Halifax leading 2 0 in their FA Trophy tie at home to Hartlepool. Eastley also taking the lead against Wealdstone by a goal to nil. It's Fennymore 1, Southport 1 in another of the All National League North ties. Boston free kick on the halfway line. Leasley again will come across from the left wing to take this. Boston leaving Pierce Bird back for the time being and then he's been told to come forward and Duxbury and Tootle are staying back far with a very high line here. What can Leasley create with the ball? In towards the box, Shields is not too far away and that was a decent ball into the box. Leasley has his head in his hands and Luke Shields was just a matter of inches away from getting his head on that one goalkeeper looked hesitant there didn't he, he didn't know whether to call me decided to stay and the ball was probably just a yard or two in front of Shields because otherwise I would stake anything on it, that was going to be 1-1 because he'd got a lot of goal to aim at yeah, was a great chance for the Boston captain, quarter of an hour in Boston trailing by a goal to nil here against AFC filed that goal 22 seconds in, Junior Mondal as the goalkeeper for Fylde kicks it long Burrow then gets back position, flat out to Leasley for the Pilgrims. Leasley plays the ball into Burrow, knocks it down with his chest for Boston, out wide to Green, Tootles further to his right, finds Matt Tootle, much better from the Pilgrims. Tootle now to Hawkridge. Hawkridge gets, gets dispossessed, but it will be a Boston United throw. Tootle picks it up, plays it short to Hawkridge. Now to Flat, just to it behind him. Out wide to two to once again, he goes down, and it will be a fouled throw. Yeah, he was looking for a free kick, but not forthcoming. Filed a throw in their own territory. And, uh, whether United bench will have a detrimental impact on today, I'm not sure they've only got four players there, one of which is a centre-half, one of which is a goalkeeper, one of which is a right-back, so really stretched today. And uh, the likes of Thanoj, Hewlis, Rollins would be, obviously attacking options from the bench but not available in the end today. Burrow does well to lay it off to his left. Duxbury has come forward from left back once again. Mondale tries to back heel it to his defender. Duxbury then goes past him like he's not there but Pond behind clears it long. Bird with the header forward for Boston. 
Shields clears it now. Pond gets in front of Burrow. Green tries to knock it down for Terry Hawkridge. Green then does play it to the right to Tootle. Preston has not had too much of the ball in the opening exchanges and doesn't get it this time off Matt Tootle's right-footed pass and it is out of play with Austin trailing 1-0. Yeah, Preston's had a very quiet game, hasn't he? I don't think we've even mentioned him yet. I know everybody was there, but uh, playing on the right-hand side today, he's not just had not had that opportunity to pick the ball up and, and have a go, really, yet. I think Pilgrims will be looking to make the most of his uh, his speed and his ability in, in the rest of this first half. Green wins the header for Boston. Leesley knocks it down to Burrow, just helps it back into the path of Paul Green once again. Now out wide to Fraser Preston for Boston. Preston back to Green. Green with it and back to Pierce Bird. Duxbury to his left if he wants to use him. Finds Scott Duxbury. Duxbury does well to get past Mondal. Duxbury cuts inside. Duxbury still going and then he is dispossessed by Mondal. It's a real mistake from Pond and he has claimed that it's gone out of play. <laughs> it will be. Well, the linesman's given a goal kick it here. It was definitely a corner because... The, the, I mean Nathan Pond put it out. He slid out, he slid and put it out. The linesman's given a goal kick. Well, I'm not quite sure what's happened there, but well, no. the linesman's on the rock on the far side of the pitch and looking through a lot of bodies, but awarded that that's a Duxbury slightly overran it, but I thought Pond slid in and put it out. Hey ho. Yeah, so goal kick for filed, eighteen minutes played. At the community stadium, it is Boston nil, filed one. Goal kick from Thomas Shields in a battle and wins a free kick. It was him and Sampson that were up against one another. Boston with a free kick on the halfway line. Yeah, Leesley again looks like he's over the ball. He's already whipped a good couple of balls in from deep. Looks like he's going to try and do. The same again, Shields very close to getting on that previous effort in front of the goalkeeper, but not quite enough, not quite near enough to the ball in the end. Yeah, hopefully we can create something here. And this time plays it along the ground to Fraser Preston. Preston now with the ball in towards the far post. Shields with a header, he's over the bar. Great chance for Boston that United. One's no, he's not given a corner there either. Goal kick. I don't know what that hit, but it, yeah, again, Leesley delivery, Shields header. That looks like the likeliest route at the moment, doesn't it? And he was certainly closer to that one than the, the previous effort. So United edging that little bit closer, but still find themselves a goal down after 20 minutes. Yeah, wonderful ball into the box this time for Boston and not too far away from getting that leveller here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. It is Hope and Glory. Dagenham and Redbridge leading uh, Ebbsfleet by two goals to nil in the FA Trophy. Which for sports equalising the space for Boston on one all. Goal kick for Thomas taking his time over this. The foul goalkeeper over the halfway line. Tutor wins the header and the free kick goes Files away. Yeah, I'm not sure it was him who was penalised or Green possibly in front. Um, long kick from Thomas, the goalkeeper, out to the left hand side. And and now it's Files' turn to try and deliver a free kick. Pond and Whitmore are going forward. They're going to lob this into the box and see what they can create. Free kick goes long on the ground. Well, the defenders haven't even got up to the penalty area and they took the free kick quickly. Fitzsimmons plays it lower along the ground. Cleared again by Files. But strange decision now. Maybe it, maybe they were used as a distraction run. I'm not sure as Fitzsimmons doesn't let the ball, ball didn't drop into the penalty area. He's had to clear it along with his foot. Yeah, I don't know whether that was a distraction technique and it was meant to happen from Files, but they didn't let the centre half get forward for that free kick. Judging by the centre half's reaction, I don't think it was. I think they were a bit disappointed that the the ball didn't go in for them to try and head it, but uh, United survived eventually anyway, so no harm done. Probably the better team at the moment, Boston, aren't they? Yeah, they've certainly warded off that early threat, haven't they? They've um, not really had a glorious chance yet. Shields header a couple of moments ago the closest they've come but yeah they've, uh, they've responded pretty well really but most of their good moments have come from Leesley set piece deliverers ball up into the air Bird wins the header on the halfway line Hawkridge can't get up there with Burrow Green knocks it to the left to Leesley now much better from Boston Hawkridge all late sliding challenge in from Pond is a good one 
in the end. Looked like it was a last gasp challenge on Hawkridge, but it will be a far throw. But an experienced campaigner from Fleetwood and with Salford, Nathan Pondon, somebody who's certainly more than comfortable playing at National League North level. Ball thrown in by Fylde towards Willoughby. Green gets it. One ball forward again. Pond having to defend against Jordan Burrow this time. Pond with it. Tries to clear it off Burrow. Played into Ogle's path. He loops it up into the air. Pond now trying to see this one out. Is it going to go out for a goal kick? Terry Hawker is trying to battle with him. But that's a battle that Nathan Pond will always win if it's strength against strength. Yeah, he's a giant, isn't he? He's, um, he's not the quickest, but he never puts himself in that position where he's going to get caught out pace-wise. So he'll be confident that he can deal with a physical battle. And he's done that pretty well so far. It is Boston United against FC Fylde. You can hear our colleagues from Fylde. I was having a chat with them a little earlier on. Some fun characters part of the uh, the Fylde commentary, commentary team this afternoon. It's always good to have a chat with our fellow media people, pretty much. The only people we can chat to at the moment. No fans in. Here come Fylde. Oh, last gas challenge from Shields. Stop Samson getting in there. Otherwise, that could have been Samson in on goal and chance to make it 2 0. Fylde with the throw, plays it to Phyllis Kirk. Well defended by Boston. Tootle gets there in front of Tollett. Burrows just keeping Whitmore busy. Back to the goalkeeper. Thomas takes the touch and then clears long with his right foot towards the halfway line. Phyllis Kirk with a good touch to control it and set it down. And now the long ball from Fylde once again looking for the running behind from Tollett. But it's gone out of play and it will be a Boston throw. Yeah, raking ball over the top from Whitmore, the left-sided centre-half, looking for the run of Tollett. He wasn't, just wasn't quite quick enough to get there, but good intent again from the visitors. And they'll know if they can get this second goal, they'll have one foot in the fourth round. Just past the halfway point of this first half here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, Rob Peace and Craig Singleton, your commentary team. It is Boston who trail by a goal to nil. That first minute goal from Junior Mondalu. Again, another player has done a bit of defending, but as we mentioned in this game, since he scored the goal, he's been on the periphery of it. Here come Fylde again with Whitmore, long ball forward, an easy one for Simmons to gather. Yeah, Mondal, like you said, a bit like Fraser Preston, he's not uh, not had a, a great impact so far. Well, he has had a great impact because he scored the decisive goal, but he's not had much of an impact since then with, with further opportunities or chances, so probably testament to the way that United have responded to that early goal. Here come Fylde though again with four players in this attack, it's four on three will the pass be picked properly by Fylde out to Willoughby into the penalty area, drives the shot, good save from Fitzsimmons Tootle then heads it to his left to Bird, still not properly cleared by Boston United, picked up by Mondal, back to Ogle cross comes in, it's a looping one, it's going to go right across to the far left hand side challenge comes in it will be a goal kick but Fitzsimmons doing well they're doing what a goalkeeper should be doing good shot stop from him but again uh, fired on the attack four on three they look dangerous they did yeah thankfully the save didn't fall straight to Sampson it was up in the air so he wasn't able to run straight onto it and head it but good save from Fitzsimmons Willoughby had got on the end of what was a four on three break and almost getting into double files advantage Goal kick 25 minutes in. It is Boston nil. Filed one here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Borough can't win the header, but Platt picks up the second ball, looping over the top. One for Preston to try and chase, but again, it's going to go out of play. And it will be a goal kick for Thomas to take. Yeah, I don't think Preston and Hawkridge are going to get much physically out of Pond. Puts himself in the way. He's not going to. Uh, let the little men get past him, unfortunately. Mm. And, uh, he's led the, the far defensive effort so far. Certainly has. So a goal kick for the Burnley Loney. Thomas to take once again. Very little for him to do on his debut. So far, goes long over the halfway line. Shields wins the header. Platt can't win the second ball. It's the run forward from Willoughby playing right on the last man at the moment. And here come Fylde once again with... Tollett looks to get the cross into the box. It's a decent ball. Mondal tries to control it. And then Hawkridge coming back, defending, does well to clear it. Now can Boston break with Joe Leasley. Good skill 
from Leesley. Tries to chip it forward for Burrow. Burrow's going to run after it, and the goalkeeper's been stood on his line. It's a chance for Burrow moving forward into the box now. Burrow tries to go across to Preston, comes back out to Paul Green. Oh, it's a poor touch from Green, and Pond recovering after making that mistake of leaving it. And now here come Fylde looking to break down the attacking left. Tootle having to defend. It's Fylde still coming forward now into the edge of the penalty area. Tootle with the sliding challenge, end to end stuff, and it all goes back to the goalkeeper, Thomas. And uh, Nathan Pond just saying there, look, it's my fault, don't worry about it, but nearly led to a goal for Boston. Yeah, I think he was probably thinking his regular number one was behind him, probably on, a, on the same wavelength, but he, he just let the ball go, didn't he? Burrow chased after it, but wasn't able to pick out, well, he picked out Paul Green, but he couldn't get a shot away. United almost handed an equaliser on a plate, but they couldn't take advantage. Ball out of play for another file throw, 27 and a half minutes in, it's Boston nil file one if you are just joining us here on this online stream on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Throw for file once again with Luke Conlon. Conlon into Willoughby, still it's with file at the moment, Willoughby picks it up once again, goes back to the halfway line to Whitmore, Ponds to his right, goes across to the file captain, he looks for the ball forward, Sampson can't control it, Platt there to pick things up, Green has to be careful, he has Lussie right in on behind him, Lussie does win the ball back for file, plays the ball back behind Whitmore, and it's sorted out though by the file defence, cleared long again by the goalkeeper, Tootle heads it forward, Preston now, can he create something by himself, flicks it over his head, can't get on the end of it because Whitmore's there covering, again cleared forward by Thomas, Bird in a battle with Sampson on the halfway line and gets a free kick. Yeah, I know it sounds harsh, but I think the programs have really got to play on this young goalkeeper, he's making his debut in at this level, um, he's quite competent, but I just want to give him, put him as under as much pressure throughout as you can because you never know what he could do. Fyle have wasted the free kick and it's a chance for Boston to come forward. Leesley with the pass to the left to Hawkridge. Got Duxbury just behind him who's already had a couple of good runs down the left. Back with Hawkridge now. Gets the cross into the box where he just gets to the penalty area. Cleared away by Fyle once again. Green with it. Back to Platt. Tootle to his right. Tootle still with it. Back to Platt once again. And now looks to get Tootle further wide. Plays it back in field though to Green. Boston being pressed by AFC Fylde, not able to find a way through as of yet. Tootle chips it forward into Burrow. Now maybe Preston can inject a bit of pace into this attack. It's back though with Green on the halfway line. Now all the way back to Pierce Bird in the centre circle. Good play from Boston though, just to keep hold of the ball, keep possession. Platt now looks for the ball in behind and looks and finds Jordan Burrow. Burrow has Preston near him, plays it forward into Preston's path. Preston wants to go past Pond and it will be the first corner of the afternoon. Yeah, we thought we'd got, we'd got one a few minutes ago and then another, but both went to the goal kick for Fylde. But Leesley, as we saw on Monday night at Evesham, got some great set piece delivery in his left foot. He actually scored with his right foot, I believe, from a corner, so he's going take with both. But United will be... Hoping they can really profit from one of these scenarios this afternoon. Leesley with the ball in towards the far post. Platt heads it back across goal and it's a good save from the goalkeeper. Just palms it over his own bar. Lewis Thomas, we've seen Boston score a lot of goals from that far post area at corners. And it was a decent opportunity there. Missed that with Tom Platt being out the side. He often wins that header at the back post. Wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that was an effort on goal, but the keeper took no chances and turned it over the crossbar. Second corner is cleared by Fylde. Played back in by Tootle, comes to the edge of the penalty area to Hawkridge, chips it in, probably the wrong decision there. And it's cleared by Fylde, but much better from Boston United, who've had the better of the play, despite being a goal to nil down here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, thanks to that Mondale effort. Yeah, nobody looked like it to be a good shooting opportunity or two there, but nobody seemed to want to take it. Both Tootle and Hawkridge found it on the left foot, whereas I think they wanted it on the right, both passed up the chance. A more decent play, but just lacking that real clear-cut chance to try and get the leveller. Tootle goes back to Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons with it. Long diagonal ball to 
Leesley. He goes down. No free kick given. Duxbury has made a forward run, so Boston having to get players back in to cover for him. It's in the centre circle now with Phyllis Kirk. It goes out to his left to Conlon. Back in field to Phyllis Kirk on the halfway line for the away side, leading 1-0. Back with Pond and then across to his centre half in Whitmore. Still it's with the away team here, with that goal to nil lead. Now looking to spring an attack with Tollett down the attacking left. Ben Tollett taking on Tootle, comes back inside on his right foot. Tollett goes the shot low, it bounced off Fitzsimmons and he gathers it in the second attempt and it remains Boston Hill far wall. Yeah, I've already touched on it, but what United cannot afford to do is go 2-0 down before half time because you sense that would be curtains. Even if you even if you only manage to draw the game, it gives you a chance on penalties today, straight to penalties after 90 minutes. So it's imperative that you don't, don't go two goals down. Pond heads it back and misjudges it and it will be another Boston corner. So third in quick succession for Boston. Definitely opportunities there for United. N the young goalkeeper, not that he's done anything wrong yet, but there's obviously a lack of communication between him and the two centre-halves. They keep leaving the ball for each other. Pond heading that one on that occasion. United have got to take advantage when they can. Far bringing everybody back for this corner. Leesley is over it. Right footed in swinger scored from a corner on Monday. Plays the ball in. Keepers missed it. Oh, and that's a great chance. And I think it was Pierce Bird who had the opportunity at the far post. And he just took his eye off the ball for a second and put it wide. That's what I mean. Goalkeeper comes, flaps, chance not taken. Uh, Leesley again, fantastic set piece delivery. Really got some uh, skill in his left foot. And uh, Fanage missing. United needs somebody to step up on that front, and he's certainly doing that. Yeah, very impressed by Leesley so far this afternoon. Good on uh, Monday as well. Goal kick four filed with Thomas. Duxbury goes up to win the header and does so. Leesley miscues the ball though and plays it up into the air. Preston, good touch to take it down into the path of Hawkridge. Hawkins being pushed back though to the halfway line. Bird has just had that opportunity a moment ago. Plays it forward, looking for the run of Leesley or Burrow, but it's just too much pace on it. And it goes out of play once again for a goal kick 34 minutes played. Yeah, United still very much in this. Goal before half time would be fantastic to change the whole mindset of the game and finally end that dispute about who's going to be the first United goal scorer here at the new stadium. It's nearly two and a half games in now. Not too much longer, surely. Finger cross. Green gets bundled in the back by Jack Sampson, who's going to be spoken to by the uh, the referee. Darlington leaning Telford by a goal to nil. Another all nothing in half time this afternoon. And another free kick for Leesley to take. Geisley also have just taken the uh, Stockport with a shot there. So it is going to be a Boston free kick. We've seen Leesley deliver a couple of real dangerous balls from this area. He's actually swapped feet there. He's <laughs> going to take it on his right foot. <laughs> the talent of Leesley plays it in. Burrow can't win the header. Cleared by Phyllis Kirk. No need to tootle on the edge of the centre circle. Back to Leesley now. Can he deliver another quality ball into the box? He does. It's chested down. Shields is offside though. For a second or two there, thought that was going to be a good opportunity for Boston United. And once again, the pass from Leesley, exquisite. Very good. You don't see many players, do you? Can just not, swap not, like not that from kick one with foot both to feet. another. To basically, to take set pieces with both feet. The only other one I can remember really is Nicky Walker. He could do it pretty well as well. Obviously now Alfreton, he'll be here next next weekend. But there aren't too many players that have got that, no. that capability. You think of all the, the regular set piece takers, whether they be left or right footed, they they stick with that foot usually, but fantastic to have that in your locker to be able to do it both footed. Bird wins the header once again as he has done for the majority of the afternoon. Leesley plays it up into the air. Burrow tries to win the header. Pond comes through and plays it long forward. Shields needs to get there and just heads it back to Fitzsimmons. And certainly the wind is playing a part here. That's Fitzsimmons, so that wasn't the wind, that was just poor goalkeeping. But it, it, we've seen a couple of times where the ball's been played long by Boston and it's gone too far, and a couple of times where it's been held up in the air when Father attacked. Yeah, that one from Pond. The centre halves initially looked like they were going to head it. It went over their heads, but then didn't have enough on it to get through to the goalkeeper. So it 
suddenly puts United on the back foot because they've got to deal with it. And make sure they don't mess it up. Bird with it, clears it long again. Burrow in a fight. Whitmore calling for his goalkeeper to come and gather it, which he does. Thomas. And then bowls it out to Whitmore on the edge of his own penalty area. Number six for Bile, long right-footed ball, looking for the run of Willoughby, who's in a battle with Bird, wins the header once again. Platt tries to flick it on, can't get it to where he wants to. Ball play through, and it's Mondal into the penalty area. Once again, looks for the second. This time, it's straight at the goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. And Junior Mondal might have had a strange game where he's had very few touches, but the two touches he could have had could have given him two goals. Yeah, it's a uh, nice threaded through ball, I think, from Phyllis Kirk in between. Left-sided centre-half and left-back and Mondal onto that. I think if he'd been a right-footer, he would have probably took it on straight away, but he wanted to get onto his left foot, just angled round it. A comfortable save in the end for Fitzsimons. Duxbury plays it forward. Leesley is going to get there. Pl looks to play the ball across the penalty area, but Nathan Pond across to block it. Ball up, Platt knocks it down. Comes to Green, thought for a second he was going to go for the shot. Hawkridge steps in and gets the ball. Wants a free kick, nothing given. Instead, Boston with Tootle, now into Preston. Inside on his left foot, Preston gonna line up the shot, goes for the shot, and it's hit the stand behind the wall, behind the goal. And it remains, Boston nil, filed one, and Craig Elliott for cutting a frustrated figure on the touchline, not because of the performance from Boston United, which has been excellent, but just the fact they've not got that final touch. And the fact they switched off in the first minute to give themselves that mountain to climb straight away, so been a frustrating half because like you say they've played pretty well at times they've, uh, they've got forward Preston's getting into the game a little bit more now wayward shot on that occasion but opportunities here if they play the cards right the Pilgrims ball up into the air again and the goal kick Platt tries to win it Green tries to then steal it off Sampson Platt gets Boston forward once again Leesley out to Burrow Burrow coming inside on his right foot goes back to Beat Bird on the halfway line, now out to Duxbury, Leesley with a foul, and it was on uh, Ogle I think it was, and it will be a free kick. I don't think he saw him coming, just uh, swung his leg, Ogle covering round, and I uh, thought the referee was going to talk to Leesley for a moment, there was nothing really in it, it was a foul, but nothing more, it was actually Willoughby that was fouled. Good trekking back from the forward, centre forward. But uh, 40 minutes in, Fard lead by that first minute goal to nil. Yeah, can Boston get themselves the level of before the break? They've had some good half chances, had some good play, but maybe not testing the goalkeeper enough. Platt comes in and wins possession for Boston. Again, Pond clears it, but it spins out to the right and out of play for a Boston United throw. Boston will leave it for Tootle. That's the industrious green in midfield. Back to the goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. He helps it out to the left to Pierce Bird. Bird going long, out to Leesley. Leesley's going to just get there, and he's offside, in fact. Good pass from Fitzsimmons, though. Wonderful ball out to the left, but Leesley just not timing his run correctly. No, I didn't, didn't even look for the flag. Didn't dawn on me that he was close, but flag straight up. Leesley looking like he was motoring into some good space to whip a ball in with his left foot, but the offside flag brought that to a halt. Filed with the free kick then. Taken by Ogle. Long into the edge of the penalty area. Shields deals with it. Hawkridge then takes it down and again out to Leesley, who's been Boston's best man in the first 41 minutes we've played. Throw for Duxbury to take. Duxbury goes long. Cleared by Fylde. Then there's been a foul there. Bird and Sampson come in together. And Bird remonstrating with the referee saying they did nothing wrong. But the referee is going to have another word with him here. Yeah? Didn't see it. Was uh, sort of following the ball, watching Shields seemingly mopping up. But just inside the fouled half, Bird and Sampson tangling. Referees uh, doing a bit of a word with Bird there to get his point across. Nothing too serious, was it? Just a tangle of bodies by the looks of things. So Pond with this free kick on the 
halfway line. Pond calling for Mondale to come short. Instead he goes long, the free kick taken, headed on by Tollett, headed away by Shields, only partially. Sampson tries to take it away from Boston on the edge of the penalty area. Chance now for Fylde to get the ball across the penalty area, which they do, and it's a chance for Mondale, and he's missed it once again. Boston able to survive another day. Now with Pond back to the halfway line to Whitmore. Chance that was for Fylde. Now out once again to the left to Conlon. Back in field to Phyllis Kirk. Oh, lovely ball from Phyllis Kirk forward. Finds Tollett just able to keep it in play. Good ball in the box from Tollett. Platt coming back, defending and able to head it clear. Hawkridge just tidying things up for Boston. But John Bora on his own. Pond misjudges the header. Can Green win it? Oh, there's a high boot from Paul Green. And there's a bit of a pushing and shoving now between the two sets of players but I think Paul Green here probably could be going into the book there wasn't any malice in it he just didn't see where the far man was coming from I think I think it was a high foot and a low head wasn't it so I suspect he's going to get yellow carded but nothing more than that just caught Conlon as he as he dived in with his head and uh, could be seeing the game's first yellow card referee just giving himself a few seconds to assess the situation but I'd be surprised if he didn't book him yeah as you say it was a, a mix of a bit of a high boot and a low head from filed man but I think there's no no doubt it was a, a free kick filed to way and green will be entering into the book I can tell you in our other commentary game Lincoln City now got a 2-0 lead against Northampton Tom Hopper scoring in League One of every Imps and Pilgrims game, home and away, so far this season. And uh, Boston's finest, Tom Hopper. Yes, had a brief spell in our uh, youth system before launching his career with Leicester City. And uh, we've got commentary of Boston on Boxing Day against Alfreton online for you, and uh, commentary of Lincoln City at home against Burton Albion. What United must not do is concede again before half time. If they have to take the one 0 deficit, fair enough, but do not go 2-0 down because it would be very difficult to come back from that against a team of this calibre yes yeah, so we've got a minute to play of the 45 free kick comes in cleared away by Shields Leesley's going to try and win it on the halfway line against Ogle isn't able to do so long ball back towards the edge of the penalty area headed away by Bird this time now Hawkridge knocks it down now there's a chance for Boston United on the attack Green moving forward he's got Leesley to his left Green plays it to Raw was going to play it to Preston and then completely misjudged the pass and it's a goal kick. Fantastic break, wasn't it? Green driving it, Leesley to the left, Preston to the right. And all he had to do was roll the ball into Preston. And you'd imagine he'd have cut back in on his left foot and got a shot away. But as it was, the uh, United's most experienced player just misplaced his pass and let Fard off the hook. It's a goal kick for Lewis Thomas to take. Clears long over the halfway line here on Hope and Glory. We're into added time in about two seconds. Ball played forward once again. Goro can't win it, and it will be one minute of added time. And uh, we get a fourth official today, Craig, which is a good. We do. It's uh, it's classed as the third round this season, but effectively it's the first round because it's where the uh, National League teams enter. So. Because the National League teams come into the draw, they have to bring a fourth official into the equation. Leasley with the cross into the box behind for a goal kick. So, one minute at a time. We've got about 30 seconds remaining then of this opening 45 minutes with Boston trailing by a goal to nil. Goal kick for Thomas to take. Thomas about to take this then. And uh, the file commentary team, they're, they're opening crackers now. Part of their uh, commentary for some reason. Platt plays it forward, wins the header, and then cleared again by file. Platt goes to win the second ball. Preston over the top. And that's going to just go through to Thomas, the goalkeeper. What have you got lined up for a second half? Any crackers? 
<laughs> Hopefully Boston United have got some crackers lined up in terms of their shooting boots because yeah, they are trailing by goal to nil at half time here on BBC. <laughs> So we've got a, a comeback to warm ourselves up the second half. That's what we want. Here come Boston early on with Paul Green taking off Green's feet by Hawkridge. He's out wide to the left. Chance for Boston. Well saved by the goalkeeper. It was a good effort from Joe Leesley. And the goalkeeper turns it round for a corner. Yeah, cross shot, whatever you want to call it. Needed saving. Lewis Thomas got down to it well. And United have the first corner of the second half within seconds. Yeah, ball played in. It's not a great corner this time, though from Leesley, cleared away to the halfway line to Duxbury, goes long forward, Hawkridge tries to help it back towards the penalty area, Pond will boot it long and high up into the sky, Tootle in a battle with it, with, uh, with Kurt Willoughby and just getting the better of the front man. Ball with Pond on the halfway line, Burrow tries to get it off him, Pond still Holds on to possession and goes back to Ogle. He goes long. And it will just go out of play for a goal kick. Yep. Chances at half chances at both ends start the second half. Like we said, if United do get this level and it stays that way, I'll go straight to penalties. First shootout at the community stadium. Hopefully they can find themselves a couple of goals and take out the need for any shootout this afternoon. Shields plays it up and out of play for a throw for Fylde, taking their time over retrieving the ball as you would expect with that goal to nil lead looking to make it through to the last 32 of the competition Conlon then to take this throw it's flicked on by Sampson headed back towards Sampson by got the skirt but out of play for a Boston throw, Tootle goes long looking for Burrow who uh, gives away a free kick Yeah, Conlon defended that pretty well, Burrow got himself in the way but fouled his man and Fylde will just take a few seconds out of the game here Whitmore centre half to take the free kick Yeah, so well it's Whitmore that's it Linesman right behind him. Whitmore with the ball forward. Over the head of Leesley. It's into Mondale. Good challenge. Slide and challenge coming in from Bird. Duxbury can't let it run out of play for a goal kick, but gets past Mondale. But Mondale then uses his body well to get the ball back. Out of play for a Boston throw. Once again, to be taken by Duxbury. Steals a few yards and then throws it straight to filed and now here come Sampson cleared again by Boston United flicked on by Preston up into the air by filed Hawkridge goes to win the tries to win the 50-50 then helps it forward looking for Fraser Preston Whitmore steps over it goes back to his goalkeeper Thomas cleared left footed over the halfway line Willoughby trying to hold on to it and wins a free kick for Boston United does Luke Shields but Willoughby falling on him yeah, I wondered which way the referee was going to give that. I think he got the right call, but Shields initially looked like he'd lost possession, but referee came to his rescue. Fitzsimons will be able to launch this forward with Bird certainly forward, if not Shields, Bird and Burrow and Platt up there mm. to aim forward. Shields just le limping at the moment from that challenge. Keep an eye on that. Fitzsimmons plays it through towards the path of Leesley, Duxbury does get it to Leesley now at the second attempt, three far players with him, Leesley looks to get a ball into the box, he does get a ball into the box, oh and there was Bird at the far post, Fylde able to defend and clear it forward, Willoughby with it, Platt in with the challenge, now here comes Fylde once again with Tollett but he runs it out of play, goalkeeper stuck on his line again, Leesley whipping that ball in, Bird getting to it at the back post. 
United Shields. has gone down here again. Got to take advantage of that if they can. Shields, yeah, he kicked it a, few, a couple of minutes ago when he tackled Sampson and the ball went out for a, a fouled throw. He seems to just take a little knock, but obviously Scott Garner is sat there as a ready-made replacement if required, but Luke Shields doesn't give in very easily. He's I can't remember an occasion where he's gone off injured, so it's going to take something to force him off the pitch today. Tuta with the throw. Cleared away by foul. Tuta plays it forward once again. Pulls of handball against Whitmore and the linesman does give the decision Boston United way. Yeah, I think it was. Just brushed his arm. Referee looking straight at it, not awarding it, but Tom Cook on the line down here in front of us. On the spot. And Leesley again, chance to deliver with that magic wand of a left foot. Can United finally profit from one of these set-piece deliveries? Fingers crossed. Leesley then to take it. Leesley with the ball into the box. Borough can't win the header. Cleared long by Fylde. Fitzsimmons will easily come and sort this one out for Boston. Edge of his penalty area. Takes a couple of looks and then goes straight down the middle looking for Borough. Leesley making an attacking run, but Borough can't win the header. Pond and thumps it out of play. And a difficult side to try and break down Fylde at the moment. They're doing their defensively jobs very well. Platt with it. Now with Shields. Looks to recover from that knock. Green trying to keep it in play. Does keep it in play. Back with Preston. Now to Hawkridge. Can Hawkridge get a ball into the box? It's a cross. It's caught by the goalkeeper. Yeah, promising position. Green held it up, played it into Preston, then to Hawkridge. Not really that much conviction on the cross though and Lewis Thomas able to claim pretty easily as the United come forward again now. Yeah, with, with Duxbury. Boston United certainly again starting this second half as they did with the first half. They they played very well, I thought, in the opening 45 minutes without the the rewards of a leveller, but they've started off well again in this second half. Yeah, and Leesley again, opportunity to deliver from a wide area. What could United make of this one? So Leesley to take this left footed, good 30 or so yards out, left hand side of the penalty area. Leesley with the ball into the box, comes to Shields, Shields heads it and just goes behind him rather than back towards the far post. Duxbury goes all the way back to his goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons, takes a touch, takes a second one and then plays it left footed long this time. Burrow challenging with Pond, Burrow this time does win the header but good defending from Ogle behind him just to sweep things up. Tootle to his right to Hawkridge. Now forward, but the ball from Hawkridge just goes out of play. But again, good play from Boston United. I, 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 apart from the first 20 odd seconds where they played dreadfully uh, and conceded, I think they've done pretty well, Craig. Yeah, it's been a good response to that first minute con concession of a goal, but not really tested Lewis Thomas too much yet. That'll be the disappointment that they've, they've had a quite a bit of the ball and a bit of neat play in and around the box, but they've not forced him into a big save yet. Ball out of play for a Boston throw once again. It was a misplaced pass from Willoughby. So Tootle to take this throw for Boston. Burrow wins the flick on. And again, Fowler just thumping it forward, aren't they? And Keep giving Boston the ball back. Yeah, they've not had any joy so far second half, have they? They've, uh, they've defended well, but they've uh, not created a, a great deal. They're under the, the cosh a little bit at the moment. The United really need to take advantage. Late challenge by Hawkridge on Tollett. Will be a free kick for Fylde. nine minutes into the second half here on Hope and Glory on BBC Radio Lincolnshire Rock Maple's Craig Singleton your commentary team filed leading by a goal to nil so free kick for Whitmore to take on the halfway line 50-50 challenge won by Sampson for the away side he gets it back now and looks to create something for Fylde ball 
played into the box. Challenge comes in on Sampson. Boston able to clear it to the halfway line. Pom miscues his clearance, but finds his teammate in Ogle. Mondale goes down. And it will be a throw this time for Val. Yeah, Leasley just came off worse in that challenge with Sampson, but took him a few seconds to get back to his feet. But he's up now, and United are going to need him during this second half, looking for a big comeback. And I fancy he would be the the key man with the quality that he possesses on that left foot. Oh, Fylde have given it away, and now here is a chance for Boston to come forward, and Preston is brought down. The referee says, though, he wasn't brought down illegally. It was a fair challenge, so Preston then comes back and wins back possession. Good industrious play from the winger. He then looks to find Burrow, but doesn't get the pass right. Mondal tries to keep it in play, and nearly played Jordan Burrow in there with a <laughs> ball over the top. Yeah, that would have been... Uh, a bizarre inadvertent assist from Mondal, but ball thankfully hit for him had gone out of play, so United got a throw in rather than a direct route through on goal with Burrow. Throw for Duxbury, goes infield to Green, got Tootle to his right, plays it into Matt Tootle. Now to Hawkridge, back with Tootle once again, ball over the top, Green with lovely chest control, going towards the byline, Green into the penalty area, just slips as he Keeps the ball in play though, only just. Hawkridge has it. Hawkridge now looks to get a cross in. Digs one out. Leesley can't win the header. Comes back out to Duxbury, 25 yards out from goal. Not able to get the shot in. Chips the ball over the top. Is Leesley going to be able to just sprint this one and keep it in play? He can't. And it's a goal kick. Again, good intent. It's just that ball from Duxbury into looking for the run of Leesley in behind. Just a fraction too heavy. And he was unable to. Keep it in, affording Fylde a goal kick, just a chance to take the sting out of what has been a, a pretty good 10 minutes or so for the Pilgrims since half-time. Yeah, so far so good for Boston, apart from finding that level up. And still trailing by a goal to nil. One ball forward by Fylde, headed away by Duxbury. Still Boston looking for that level, looking for their first goal in their third game at this new ground. Platt with the ball over the top, Burrow wins the flick on. Now into Preston, lovely turn from Preston. Finds Leesley, edge of the D. Leesley on his right foot, can he get a shot away? Now goes back to his left, picked off his feet by Preston. Duxbury now with it, can he drive into the penalty area? Duxbury still keeping hold of it and then still keeping hold of it, going towards the byline. Can he get a cross in? He does get a cross and he's flicked across goal. Comes back out to Tootle now, wide right position. Got Platt behind him, got Hawkridge there. Works to one, two, really good play from Boston. Tootle, oh, gets the cross all wrong, but he comes back out to Hawkridge. Can he get a cross into the box? It hits Matt Tootle. Bit of time for Tootle to find his man in Hawkridge. Good play though from Boston United. Just not able to get that final ball and find the ball into the back of the net. Here come Boston once again with Leesley. Cross comes in. Green and Burrow going up for the header. Both of them can't get it. It's out wide to Hawkridge now. He looks to get a cross in. Towards the far post. Burrow comes up with the header. Can't win it. Still Boston with it. Leesley gets the shot away. It's blocked. And Fylde are able now to come on the attack with Regan Ogle. Bird slides in to stop the forward ball to Willoughby and it is just not clicking in that final third, is it, for Boston, Craig? A lot of great build-up play, but that's it. Yeah, very very good sustained period of play in and around the box there. Tootle getting in behind, just pulling his cross to straight to a five man. Hawkridge whipping across in, Burrow not getting enough of a header on it thanks to the presence of Pond. And like you say, United playing some glorious stuff in and around that penalty area, but they're just looking for that key moment to get themselves a leveller. I think this is one of Boston's better performances this season that I've seen, certainly, in terms of the, the quality of the football they're playing. It's been really good, but just lacking the final touch. Yeah, it smacks of uh, the performance at Fylde, really, in November. It was a really good display that day. They only had one goal to show for their efforts at half-time. One ball into the box, cleared away by Boston. Still Fylde leading by a goal to nil. Pond with it, plays it back towards goal. Calls it offside against Sampson, not given. Sampson heads it towards the penalty area. Mondale gets it back into Tollett's path. Good sliding challenge, though, for Boston. I think it was uh, Matt Tootle, I think, who got the, the sliding challenge in there. And now here come 
Boston United with Green. Green looking to set Leesley off on the left. Good ball from Green out to Leesley. Leesley into the edge of the penalty area. Plays it across goal. Comes back to Leesley. Leesley on his left foot now. Corner. Getting stretched now, is it? The game fouled. Getting forward, looking for that second goal, Mundal. Mundal not close, not far away. And then United straight back onto it. Great crossfield ball, I think, from Green out to Leesley. And so close to creating that moment for United. But again, he's got a corner here. Looks like a left footer this time. So ball for Leesley. Right footer even. Into the penalty area. Here it comes. Ball is coming towards the near post. It's flicked towards goal by Shields. And now Shields lost sight of the ball. And here come fouled on the attack. And it's three on three. Pond moving forward. Out wide to Mondal to the right. Mondal scored the opener in 22 seconds. Comes back inside on his left foot. Gets the shot away. It's blocked in front of Fitzsimmons' goal by Matt Tootle. And Boston are able to survive that counter-attack. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a good game, isn't it? It's open, both sides going for it. Fylde have been on the back foot for the opening stages of this second half, but they know if they can get themselves as a second goal, they're almost there. But interestingly, Pond is down. He was stretching off his hamstring a couple of minutes ago, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if he actually is going to be coming off. I'm just looking who... But yeah, they have got a light for light replacement on the bench in Jack Sanders. Um, but it would not surprise me if he may be coming off he was stretching out a few minutes ago and he's now down for treatment yeah and he's, he's someone like Jordan Murray's not got much change out of especially in the air so that could be a, a positive for Boston yeah I think it was Sanders and uh, Whitmore that played in the game at Mill Farm for, for what was it three weeks ago four weeks ago um, so I think United would prefer it if Pond did come off he's a big presence he doesn't give much away in the air he's, uh, he's a giant he wins everything just interesting to see whether, whether he does come back from this. He's uh, the file captain, he's up on his feet. Perhaps he'll be okay to continue after all, but United will want to keep putting the ball in and around that area, making him run. Because he's certainly stretching off at the moment, to, as if he's feeling something. So, he's going to be a free kick for Boston. Prime Minister currently giving his uh, press conference. Down the street. Hey, we'll bring you the latest from that press conference. Tier four, it's flashed up wherever yeah, that tier is. Four South East uh, England. South East East of England of London. Entering a tier four. Ball with Shields goes back to Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons goes long. Boro can't win the header with Pond. Second ball is won by Boston in midfield by Green. Preston's going to try and get there in front of the goalkeeper. And he was just blocked off on his way through. Yeah, Conlon just did enough to put him off because I think he would have got there otherwise. Thomas out quickly on that occasion, mopping up behind his back line. And United, really. Done everything but score today, haven't they? They're coming up to the last 25 minutes. Really want a grandstand finish here from the Pilgrims. Tootle tries to head it back to his goalkeeper. It comes off the head of Willoughby. Does he prevent the corner? No, he doesn't. It's a goal kick. Not, not, many chain, not many options really on the bench for Craig Ellick, but I imagine he probably wouldn't want to change it at the moment because no, his side have been the, b the better team, haven't they? It can, it can work against you sometimes. You've got all those attacking players sat there and you suddenly think you've got to make a change, but perhaps you've been doing okay and... You don't necessarily need to change too much. I, I don't know where his first change would be today. DeMeo potentially as a midfield player. He could, he could even put Garner on and go three centre-halves, push the two wing-backs on. I, I, I'm not really sure. There's not a, an obvious one there that he's going to be first off that bench today. And you might see a foul change. I'm taking the time over the free kick, I think, to try and get this change sorted for... I imagine it will be Nathan Pond coming off. No, I think this is um, Nathan Shaw coming in. who got the winner in the league game. He's a wide player, so there's another. But I've just seen there's another foul player who's gone down. Looks like it's Willoughby. I think he's gone down. Yeah, I think that's probably the likelier change. Pond looks like he's okay for the time being. He's still stretching. 
doesn't feel quite right, but yeah, this is Willoughby who's coming off. So, latest from the Prime Minister's press conference: uh, the rules allowing up to three households to meet will now be limited to Christmas Day only. That's the latest from the Prime Minister's press conference. More details on BBC Radio Lincolnshire throughout the afternoon and evening. Is that everywhere, not just London? That's everywhere. Yeah. Talk about move those goalposts at the last minute. the latest from the Prime Minister's press conference. Fild taking the time over this. Willoughby's obviously coming off, but the physio's in no rush to get him off. Oh, they're more than happy with a 1-0 victory here today, aren't they? They're not uh, going to break the necks to do anything to jeopardise that. But it is Nathan Shaw, who was the match winner in the league fixture three weeks ago, coming on for Kurt Willoughby. Fairly, pretty much a light-for-light -light swap for Fylde. Yep. The substitution for FC yeah. Fylde. First sub being made. 18, Kurt Willoughby, to be replaced by number 14, Nathan Shaw. So, Willoughby off, Shaw on. And we just feel the back of his left hamstring. Fylde leading by a goal to nil. Here on Open Glory on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Whitmore plays the ball forward. Up into the air by Bird. Preston tries to play it forward over the halfway line. Burrow there trying to cause Pond some issues. Who plays the ball behind him. Out of play for a throw. Burrow, clever thinking with the forward throw, but can't find Paul Green. Nice idea, though, from Burrow. Yeah, I think he just threw it too hard, didn't he? Threw too far in front of Green. And uh, keeper Thomas again out on his debut to, to mop up. He's got this clean sheet. He doesn't want to let go of it. And... Uh, United got just over 20 minutes to salvage a penalty shootout at worst. Ball with Preston, knocks it down. Green has it. Free kick for Boston United. So Scott Garner's coming on, so perhaps it is going to be a change of shape. Go three at the back, push your wing backs on. Beasley to take not, this. Not imminent perhaps, but he's out, certainly out getting some instructions from John McDermott. Leading to take his free kick then in the centre circle. Leasley with the ball in. Platt goes up to win the header, does well. Cleared by Fylde. Hawkridge heads it back towards goal again, headed away by Fylde. With the substitute Shaw. Long ball over the top, looking for Tollett. Just too much on it though, and it runs through to Fitzsimmons. Yeah, you know, I obviously going to have to watch that as well, that they don't get caught out. They're obviously throwing more and more forward. That was obviously a set piece they were attacking, but can't afford for this to go 2-0 because that will be game over. I just wonder with Scott Garner whether they might put him in as a central midfielder to try and win the second balls a bit more. Or even a centre forward, win perhaps. Yes, potentially. Whitmore and Burrow have done a Oh, ball job. played through. Preston trying to get there. It was Burrow who won the flick on this time. File are able to clear it long ball out for a Boston throw he has played all the way through the pitch for Boston and uh, when you're chasing the game well, there's probably no harm in in trying it particularly when you when you're short of options from the bench today Hawkins leaves the throw for Tootle we're halfway through the second half Boston still losing 1-0 here on Hope and Glory on BBC Radio Lincolnshire Tootle to take the throw Played it into Hawkridge, headed back out wide for Leasley. Leasley trying to work a crossing situation for Boston. Leasley still with it. Tootle kind of just trying to avoid being in the way. It comes back to Matt Tootle. Now out wide to Leasley once again. This time he does get the cross in, but it's an easy gather for the goalkeeper, Thomas. Yeah, a decent play again from Leasley, chopping and changing his feet to try and get that ball in. Eventually it went in, but too close to the goalkeeper. Thomas is always going to come and pluck those out of the air without too many issues. Long ball forward. Flicked on again by Sampson for file. Shields having trouble with Tollett, but free kick goes Boston's way. Yeah, he uh, always looked like he was going to get the foul. Tollett just left one in, I think. But another free kick. It's just getting a little bit feisty, isn't it, between two teams? That was Lussie, I think, just uh, 
taking Tootle down, nothing too untoward, but a definite foul. A chance to maybe load one or two forward. Yeah, free kick for Fitzsimmons to take once again. Fitzsimmons to take this free kick for Boston. Shields up there. Shields can't win the header. Cleared up into the air by foul. No real distance on it though. Just high. Platt wins the header. Preston can't get there. Foul with it in the centre of midfield at the moment. Back now to the left back, Conlon. Conlon has it and then loses it under his feet and it's got out of play. That has gone miles out of play, linesman. And it does give the decision in the end. Yeah, good play from Conlon initially, but then checked back on himself and lost possession, inviting United forward again. Down this right hand side. Tootle with it to Platt. Platt gets dispossessed by Nathan Shaw. Forward to Sampson. Runners right and left. Instead, he goes back to Lussy. Now out wide to the left to Ben Tollett. Running at the Boston United defence. Good defending there from Platt. Gets a foot in. Yeah, good play. Tollett just shaping to go inside onto his right foot. Platt there in the Tom Platt role. Just intercepting. Cutting off that danger. Giving United a chance to reset themselves and get back in the shape. Conlon with it, back to Villaskirk. Chip ball forward over the head of Shields. Comes back out to Tollett with the shot, well blocked by Pierce Bird. Now Fylde having the best of the chances in the last couple of minutes. Long ball from Ogle, out of play. Yeah, a little bit wasteful there from Ogle, out on the right hand side. Cross dropped, well out of play. Over Fitzsimons goal, we'll take this goal kick. United have now got about 18 minutes to find at least one goal. Tootle tries to get it forward for Boston again. It's cleared. I just take the one goal. Take the one goal and just needs win something, on penalties. Yeah. That'd be a nice, uh, a nice first for this new ground. Burrow tries to win the header and then plays it forward. That's oh, not a free kick. It is not, not a free kick. There was a, a low head. And Burrow's frustrated with that, and I can understand why. Same player on both. I think Green was booked for one first half on Conlon and stuck his head in there again at Burrow's, well, not at his feet, as the foot was raised, but it wasn't that high, was it? And now jo Jordan Burrow's going to get a talking to. Strange decision-making from the... Referee, but nothing Boston can do about it now. So it is Lewis Thomas who will take this goal kick or free kick for the goalkeeper. And Boston about to make a double change. Scott Garner coming on. Connor DiMeo coming on as well, but play has continued. We've got 17 minutes plus added time to go. Boston need a goal. So there's a third centre half coming on. So is it Hawkridge probably for DiMeo, Garner maybe for, for Duxbury? And the thing is that United haven't got really a second striker today. They'd normally push Steelers into that role or Jay Rollins, but. Not sure who would go and fulfil that role today. Fraser Preston, potentially. Platt pokes it forward to Green. Back to Shields. Spins up into the air and it is out of play. And uh, we are about to see that double change then. And uh, yeah, Hawkridge is one of the numbers. Coming off. So DeMeo on for Hawkridge. And the other change is Duxbury. Duxbury, as you guessed it. Yeah. Leasley can play that wing-back role, can he? Tootle on the right. So three at the back. Bird pushes over to the left-hand side. Looks like it's going to be Platt, Green, DeMeo in midfield and, and Fraser Preston so to play in and around Jordan Burrow. So there's those two changes for Boston. Change of formation, change of shape for the Pilgrims as well as they look to get back into this game. Ball with Platt, looks for the run forward of Preston who's got the ball, 
Burrows through. It is into Burrow, is it? No, Preston can't put enough on the pass. It comes back out to Leesley now. Leesley has to be careful to get dispossessed by Mondal. And it is going to be kept in play by the goalkeeper. Oh, and Fraser Preston, he's got his head in his hand because he knows that was a glorious chance to play the ball through and put Jordan Burrow in on goal. Just didn't get enough on it, did he? It was, uh, it was there for Burrow, advancing into the area. But the ball didn't reach him. And, uh, story of United's afternoon. Story of United's recent games this season, I'm afraid. Shields just helps the ball through to Fitzsimmons. It already feels like the final five minutes of game. Fitzsimmons coming long to clear it forward. Over the head of Pond. But it will go through to the goalkeeper, Thomas, once again. Not really anything else the manager can do with just Peter Crook and Tyrell Warren on the bench. And it is Thomas to take this goal kick. Ball out wide to Conlon. Going forward. Green then dispossesses Sampson. Ball picked up and now here's a chance for Boston and it's Fraser Preston. Preston in on goal. Can Preston score? He's taken too much time over it. He's into the edge of the penalty area. Still keeps hold of the ball. Still Fraser Preston. Out wide to the right to Tootle. Looks for the forward ball to Green. Green chips the ball up. Headed away by Fylde. Back with Scott Garner now at centre half. Shields steps forward. Finds Green, Tootle makes the forward run. Green with a bit of space now to maybe dig a cross out. Instead goes to Tootle. Tootle still with it. Tootle into Green. Gets dispossessed and Fyle are able to clear it. And well, what happened to Fraser Preston there, Craig? I thought he was offside, to be honest. I was expecting the flag to go up, but we got beyond that. Just didn't have the composure, did he, to waltz into the box. And and draw United level, it was there for him, but uh, chances continue to arrive. And here comes Leesley for Boston, back to Di Maio. can he pick the pass into the box? Preston knocks it down, Burrow can't get there, Pons in the penalty area and wins a free kick. Good defending, he's down again, I think he's just doing his laces this time. But he's holding it together for far, isn't he, he's an experienced campaigner. Excellent defender at this level. And he's determined to see his side over the line in these last 12 minutes. Yep. Boston have not necessarily had clear cut chances, testing the goalkeeper a lot, but they've had enough opportunities, haven't they? They've had enough of the ball, yeah. It's uh, disappointing, isn't it, that it's um, just lacking that. Finishing touch, that decisive moment in and around the penalty area. Fitzsimmons comes to gather the ball. Cleared long up into the air. Burrow can't win it. Comes back to Fitzsimmons once again. Long ball forward. Pond wins the header for Fylde once again. Fitzsimmons clears it long. Green flicks it forward to Burrow. Now maybe a chance for Boston United, but Tuto can't get there. Second ball won by Green. He gets then dispossessed. Tootle's down on the ground, but it's filed now with a chance. Mondell was in acres of space on the right. Shields gets done by Tollett. Tollett running in towards the edge of the penalty area. Tries to play it back to the substitute sure and it has stretched this game to the extreme with 11 minutes to go the goalkeeper has come out right to the edge of his penalty area to clear it and he does bird to the left to Leesley and it's been an entertaining encounter this one ball is with Paul Green here is Sanders coming on for Fard so whether it's a light for light with Pond or whether he's going to go in there as well no I think it's uh, Sampson coming off so it's centre half for centre forward there 
Not much of a surprise, is it, the way this game is going? Because no, I think Fylde have to defend quite a lot. Trying to hold on to what they've got now and uh, a little over 10 minutes to play. And we are going to see Tyro Warren come on. Substitution for Fylde. For two, so by the looks of it. Jack Sanders replaces number 15, Jack Sampson. And, uh, well, Tara Warren not coming on yet. Not sure what happened there. Who was he coming Tootle on Tootle was going to be the man coming off, but I don't think the linesman's got his, uh, the fourth official's got his paperwork ready, I think. I think that's the main issue. Burrow tries to win the header. DeMeo steps in to try and get possession for Boston, but Fylde come away with it with Philiskirk. Plays the ball infield. DeMeo can't win the challenge with Lussi. Lussi plays the ball forward for Mondau. This game is certainly stretched. Boston still trailing by a goal to nil. Back to Lussi once again. Now into the middle of midfield to Philiskirk. Back to the halfway line. Pond has it. Foul on Mondal by Bird. Free kick. We are going to see that change now, and it is going to be Tootle coming off. And in fact, Fylde taking the quick free kick, but sub was already being made. So Tootle off Warren on. Probably just a bit of fresh legs, isn't it, Craig? More than anything else down the uh, the right for Boston. Yeah, you've got the uh, you've got the last sub, sub there. You may as well use him. Nothing to lose at this the late final stage. Substitution replacing two Matt Tootle is 15 Tyrell Warren. Like you say, fresh legs, younger legs to get forward now. United are going to have to. Do plenty of running if they want to get back into this. So Tyrell's on and uh, chance to make himself a hero in these last seven or eight minutes. Yeah, he would be one of the more unlikely of scorers, wouldn't he, Tyrell Warren? But Boston will take anybody scoring. They'll even take an own goal. Just to pull them back level and get that first goal at the new stadium. Given away by File into the path of Paul Green. Platt now with it to DeMeo. Out to the left to Burrow. Back to DeMeo. DeMeo's still with it. DeMeo takes it on into the penalty area now. On his right foot, goes for the curling effort! They score and scores! Great finish from Conor DeMeo. Brilliant. First Pilgrims goal at the Jakemans Community Stadium. And it's a cracker. DeMeo just working that yard of space and bending it into the far corner beyond Lewis Thomas. And you've got to say, it's deserved. It's, uh, it's been a good response to the Pilgrims from that first minute setback. But there we go, a goal worthy of capping any occasion. Certainly was. Connor DeMeo, the man with the goal. Superb finish. And it was just one of them. He's always got that ability just to create a little space for himself on the edge of the penalty area. And he did that there. And Boston are back level. What a piece here on Hope and Glory. And there was me saying... Um, the options weren't there on the bench. The man has come on and, and equalised with a sublime goal. Well, Boston had to suffer a defeat at Fylde by Fylde turning the game on its head. Will Boston turn it on its head here? Leesley with the ball in the box. Cleared away. Now picked up by Pierce Bird. Bird out wide to the left to Leesley. Leesley. Looking to work a bit of space to get a cross in. He does get a cross in, but it goes behind for a goal kick. And now, well, if the, the game remains as it is, number one, we're going to penalties. But if the game, in terms of the, the, the passage of play, remains as it is, Boston have got a great chance of going and getting a winner. They have, yeah. They're, uh, they've been on top, haven't they? They've just got to make sure that change of system doesn't leave them open now. It shouldn't do. They've got three experienced centre-halves on there. Got a very capable 11 out there still, even after the changes. Oh, Fylde playing it around. It, that goal is well worth a watch. It's just a shame it, from the, the camera angle, it might not make it look as good as it was because the, uh, the camera won't be. You, it's one of those where you really need to be behind the ball to, to enjoy, I think, the, the wonder of the curl. The goalkeeper was just watching. He was a bystander as the ball went into the back of the net. Long ball forward. Comes into the arms of Fitzsimmons for Boston. So, can they do it? We've got. About five and a half minutes to go. Can Boston go and get a winner? Or will we get out to a penalty shootout? Well, for the sheer drama of it, you'd say penalties. But give me a winning goal now for United, and I'll certainly take that. They've uh, 
they deserve to be level at the very least, don't they, given given how well they've yeah, played and, certainly. and a, a goal worthy of, of getting them level as well. Green flicks it on, Preston tries to get there, good defending by Files, fullback Conlon. Fire man down on the uh, halfway line. Tollett in a battle with uh, Garner there. I don't know who, the, uh, who he's having a go at. I think he, oh, probably the fourth official. I was going to say the linesman stood up near us. So. Not that the uh, fourth official was in a position to uh, get it involved and yeah. give that. So, free kick for Files. Not long to go now. That Connor De Mayo equaliser for Boston, one apiece. And we can finally stop saying it, can't we? That who's going to get that first goal? It's taken almost three games, but <laughs> it's there now. It was worth the wait, wasn't it? It, it, it certainly was. It Last thing you wanted was a tapping, wasn't it? Every goal counts, <laughs> but it wasn't a scruffy tapping, was it? It was a, a really well crafted and finished goal from uh, one of the club's most technically gifted players. And here he is on the ball once again. Di Mayo stabs it through, just too much on the pass this time. Yeah, he's, I think he's probably a little bit unlucky, really, not to be featuring today as a, a, a starter, because from the games that I've seen for Boston, he's been, the, for me, the standout player. Yeah, I thought in that first game that me and you did here against Chorley, some of his, his personal play was fantastic. He uh, created all United's best openings that day. Very skillful but player. again, I suppose with Garner and De Mayo, it's not necessarily a case of being dropped. It's just a bit of squad rotation, given the amount of games and, and the quality that United possess, even with players missing today. Yeah, Green tries to play the ball back to Warren. De Mayo wins a throw for Boston. As we head towards penalties. No few list today for a penalty, though. No, no. I imagine Thanos would have been a penalty taker with his yeah. set piece prowess. I'd imagine Leesley would be one. Yeah, Paul uh, Green, I imagine, is a. Paul Green, De Mayo, possibly with the technique that he's got. Jordan Burrow, I'd have thought, would want one. And then maybe a, a left field choice, maybe one of the centre halves. I know Pierce Bird took one in a County Cup game for Eastley a few weeks ago. He scored. Yeah, not so much Scott Garner, maybe. He's. Uh, not had the best record from the spot for the Pilgrims, but not yeah. very often a shootout comes round, is it? No, still might not come round. We've still got, what have we got, about three minutes to go plus added time. Boston 1, Files 1 here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Ball is with file, free kick given to them. Now with Jack Sanders, the substitute at centre-half, striding forward. Got Ogle to his right, plays it to him. Back to Sanders once again. Still with file, but Boston forcing him back to the halfway line to Pond. Pond plays the ball short and then back to Whitmore. Warren has to be careful not to foul Conlon. He switches play over to the left. Leesley just misjudges it, but still is filed in possession now with their goal scorer, Mondal, seems a very, very long time ago since he scored that opener, 22 seconds into this game, when Mondal, who's on the ball now, plays it short, still Phyllis Kirk with it for Fylde, trips it across the box, it's a chance for Fylde, shot comes in, well, well blocked, and that is Tom Platt doing Tom Platt things. Brilliant block, you're thinking all that effort to get back into the game, and we're talking about penalties, 89 minutes, the cross comes in, and Conlon seemingly to win it for Fylde and Tom Platt comes from nowhere and keeps United level. Two minutes to go, plus added time. Corner for Fylde. Corner played in towards far post, goes over everybody's head and behind for a goal kick. Lincoln City scored a third against Northampton. They lead by three goals to nil in their League One game. So could it be a happy afternoon with both of our local sides winning? For Boston, they might not have to do it the normal way. Might have to be through a penalty shootout. We'll just have to wait and see. Nick Chadwick, the uh, file manager, is almost looking round at his bench, thinking, is there a penalty taker there? Or I need to get on the pitch. I think they've still got one substitution up the sleeve. United have obviously made their changes and can do no more on that front. Pond striding forward through the midfield for Fylde. Out to the left to Tollett. Boston now having to do some defending. 
in these final few minutes. Ball with Phyllis Skirk, bit of space for Phyllis Skirk to line up the shot. He cuts back inside on his left foot. Phyllis Skirk with the effort over the bar. That was the moment, wasn't it? Phyllis Kirk, one of Far's most gifted players, cutting inside, but wayward finish, thankfully, from a United point of view, and we're going to have four additional minutes here at the Jakemans Community Stadium. So four minutes away from a penalty shootout. Fitzsimmons to take this goal kick. Time allowed at the end of today's match is four minutes, minimum four minutes. So what will happen... In these final four minutes, will anything happen or will we see it out to a penalty shootout between Boston and Fylde? Ball up in the air from Shields. Pondvis judges it. Burrow takes it down, but it's Fylde again on the attack. Phyllis Skirk looks to play the ball through. Leesley sprinting to try and get back. It's played across the penalty area. Oh, great defending from Boston United once again. I think it was the skipper, Luke Shields, who just got a touch on it. Yeah, Tollett coming in to sweep that in at the back post. And Shields just there in the nick of time and he didn't even manage to he managed to not concede a corner in the process it was a throw in oh here come United yeah maybe a chance for Boston to go on the attack DeMeo with it looks to play the ball over the top but way too much on it and Fraser Preston can't get there and it's going to be gathered by the goalkeeper Lewis Thomas for filed ball with Nathan Pond still filed now looking maybe the likely to go and get a winner at this moment in time ball with Phyllis Kirk on the halfway line given away though by the away side here come Boston United played into Paul Green's path he's got Warren to his right we're about to see a file change I assume ready for a penalty shootout but Whitmore's played it straight out of play yeah, it's we good. are going to see that change Luke Brennan the Blackburn Rovers loanee coming on he's he came on in the uh, the league fixture. He started on Tuesday night in the last round against Curzon, but he's replacing the goal scorer, Junior Mondal. So Mondal off, who's done very little in this game, but the thing he did was set it up for this point. And Boston are going to put a long throw into the box with Leesley. Shields staying back with Bird. Garn has gone up for this one. Leesley into the box, headed away by Fylde. Leesley will pick up another ball, a chance to get a cross into the box. It's well over hit and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, and I think that might just see us through now. That sub was 90 plus three. By the time the goalkeeper's taken this, we're going to be into the fourth minute. And both teams potentially happy to try take the take the chance at, at penalties. Here come now the substitutes. Sanders for Fylde. Cleared away by Boston, only temporarily though. Still maybe one more opportunity in this game. Sanders plays it forward, Leesley heads it clear. DeMeo tries to take it down. Boston throw. It's with the Boston man in Leesley. And we've been a good performance from Boston United today and our Heading towards a penalty shootout. Burrow tries to knock it down. Cleared long by Fylde once again. Bird gets the throw. In fact, no, the referee's changed his mind. Linesman gave it one way. Referee's given it another. So, long ball forward into Tollett's path. Maybe one last opportunity for Fylde here. Back on the halfway line with Whitmore. Goes to his left to... Lussie, Shields has to be careful, does well, but Warren's played it straight back into the path of the opponent. Pond to Phyllis Skirk, Got about 30 seconds remaining in this game. I don't think we've got that long, we're literally into single oh, figures. Oh, there's a late challenge, referee says he's got the ball, but it's still, in fact, it's gone Boston United's way. Hey. Filed have scored, but the free kick's gone Boston United's way. What was that? I thought... Didn't think he'd given it to play the advantage. And then <laughs> Craig Elliott has just turned around to his opponent and gone, I've got no idea what that was for. I mean, it was a sliding challenge came in. Fylde wanted a free kick. And all I can assume is that the man who put in the sliding challenge for Boston then was kept held down. Possibly. I'd I don't know. As no, I say, I I, I've got no idea really what went on there. But 
lucky for Boston because I know the players stopped, but there's a good finish from Tollett. So Fitzsimmons to take this, and that should be about that. Referee allowing a little bit more maybe for that substitution. And there is the full-time whistle, so we will be going to a penalty shootout here in the FA Trophy. Phyllis Kirk's just leading the protest there, saying, what on earth was that decision all about? Um, so the final score... Because the, at the end of it, Fylde had the ball in the net, didn't they? So they're saying they should have won, but... We're going to penalties. It's not something you see every day of the week. No. There's no real advantage either side, is there? in this penalty shootout. No fans in the ground, so it doesn't really matter which way you go, in terms of which end you go for. But we are at penalties then. So it's Boston against Fylde, one apiece here, and it will be a penalty shootout to decide who makes it through to the last 32 of the FA Trophy this season. And Fylde, uh, not happy with that decision. They're not, yeah. are they, at all? Nick Chadwick, the interim manager's marched over. He's having a good chat. Got his assistant with him. It would be interesting to see it back. I'm not... In fact, let's see if we can watch it back just while we've got a, <laughs> yeah, a, a few seconds. Very to difficult. To, uh, the sliding challenge went in, and there was the, you know, there was the, the challenge went in to to say that it was a you know a, a foul. Um, we well looked like it was going to be a foul potentially. And uh, yeah, we're just going to watch this back. We're just watching the stream back, and as I say, it pond had the the pond. ball, and it was just played to his right, and then the sliding challenge is about to come in. It's just we're watching back this replay any second now. Here comes the challenge. So it was Garner. He's oh, his referee said he got the ball. Yeah, and then he gave the free kick for be for pulling. I think the lad then pulled back. So Garner flew in. <laughs> <didn't he? laughs> he did as well. Yeah. <laughs> you would normally see that penalised, wouldn't you? But referee clearly signalled ball, and then uh, I think Garner just got tugged back and. Uh, United got the decision. Maybe it's just enough to see them over the line. Who knows? This one of the goalkeepers is going to make themselves a hero, aren't they? It's uh, Lewis Thomas, the Burnley loanee, making his final debut against Ross Fitzsimons. So, who am I saying? I'm saying the five will probably be Green, Borough, yeah. Bird, Leesley, and DeMayo. Just a gut feeling. Can't even say it's ever really been discussed because it's not something you normally consider, is it? It'd be interesting to see which end no. as well. Right? Yeah, all these. The referee <laughs> often <laughs> said to you, oh, if we have to have penalties, is there a safety reason that you can. Uh, you have to have it at a certain end? And if it had been at York Street with a full crowd, you'd say, yeah, get it at the town end because <laughs> that's where your home fans are. But I can't imagine there's any particular advantage today, probably at the, uh, the north stand, the town end of this ground. No, well, did you say you can't get the ball back from the, the building side at the moment? Well, th yeah, that was actually the uh, one consideration, that if the ball does go over, come on, ref, we <laughs> might run out of footballs. <laughs> they yeah. actually said to us at Evesham the other night that had that gone to penalties, that from a safety point of view, that the uh, penalties would have been taken from our from to, the to our left as we sat, because that was the open end for COVID reasons. So <laughs> everyone was out in the open air rather than at the... The enclosed end. So it looks like Fylde are going to go first, and yeah. it's Danny Phyllis Kirk. So Phyllis Kirk with this first one, then. Here we go. Phyllis Kirk to take the first penalty for Fylde. Up against Ross Fitzsimmons for a place in the last 32 of the FA Trophy. Phyllis Kirk against Fitzsimmons to start this penalty shootout off. One all after the 90 minutes. Mondale for Fylde. De Mayo with a wonderful leveller for Boston. Phyllis Kirk with a very long run up at the edge of the D. He's currently standing. Referee just getting everything ready for this penalty shootout. Just takes a couple of steps back. So Phyllis Kirk against Fitzsimmons, the first battle of the penalty shootout. Who will come out on top? Phyllis Kirk steps up. Oh, and it's hit the bar and come out, I think. Yeah, ferocious strike across against the crossbar. I mean, uh, for a second, it looked like it had hit the top of the net and come back out, the ferocity of it. I know. But no, it's Boston then with a chance to get the advantage for a second then. I thought it had gone 
flying into the net and come back out. But no. Here's a chance for Boston then. Burrow, can he give Boston a goal to nil? Leading this shootout, lovely penalty. To the goalkeeper's left, 1-0. Yeah, clinical from Burrow. Never looked like missing, did he? So next up for file is Jordan Lussie. Well, first penalty, I still can't get over how hard he hit it. Phyllis Gerg. Here comes Lussie then for Fylde. Can he pull them back to one all? Lussie to take this penalty for the away side. <laughs> Referee blows on his whistle. Lussie short run up and good penalty. Really good penalty. Fitzsimmons guessed the right way, but there was no way he was stopping that one. And it's now one all for well, Boston about to take their second penalty. The man who scored the first goal at the Jatemans Community Stadium for the Pilgrims, Connor DeMeo, stepping up for it. It's the debutant, Lewis Thomas. He's the man clapping at the moment. So, can DeMeo give Boston a 2 1 lead? DeMeo steps up and just strokes it down low. Not worried about the goalkeeper there. 2 1 to Boston after the first two penalties. Up next is Nathan Shaw. He scored in the league fixture between the two. Fitzsimmons' first penalty got a touch on and save. Second one, he guessed the right way but couldn't save it. What can he do with this third? So Shaw for Fylde. Third penalty for them. Steps up, left footed, puts it the right way for him, the wrong way for Fitzsimmons. And it is now 2 2 for Boston to take their third penalty with. Tom Platt, the man stepping forward to take it. So Platt, can he complete it, make it 100% so far for Boston after three rounds of penalties. Platt comes forward, strikes it straight down the middle. Confident penalty from Tom Platt. So 3-2 after three penalties. Now here comes the late substitute. I imagine brought on just for this situation. Luke Brennan to take penalty number four. Crucial one for file this. If they miss this, Boston will have a chance to win. So Brennan steps up, just shifts to his right, hits it right footed. Good save from Fitzsimmons. Dives low down to his left hand side. Really good save. And now it is a chance for Boston United to go and win it. And it is Scott Garner. Blimey, I've seen him <laughs> take two penalties. One at North Ferriby in the trophy. Missed. The year Ferriby won it. That was to put Boston 2-0 up. Um, and then in the playoffs against Chorley. Redemption, maybe? Could this be the moment, then? Scott Garner. Can he give Boston United a place in the last 32 of the FA Trophy? Just pulls down at his shoelaces. Garner. Steps up right footed and he yes. scores and it is a win for Boston United in the FA Trophy. They are in the last 32 of the competition. They've won on penalties. It was a 4-2 victory in the shootout. Boston 100% record from penalties. Filed missing 2-1, hitting the crossbar. The other a really good save from Ross Fitzsimmons. And, and I think actually, Craig, on, the, on the, the, the play as a whole, I think Boston United deserving probably to get through. Definitely, yeah. It didn't look like it was going to come, did it? And I'm absolutely thrilled for Garner there because, like we say, he's missed two big penalties in the past. And to go and stick that one away today, um, fantastic. <laughs>